Welcome to project 14 of Hacking with Swift. In this project, we'll make our second Sprite Kit game. It's called Whack a Penguin. Now, that might sound just like Whack a Mole with good reason, because that's what we're making. Except, Whack a Penguin is not trademarked. For more information, see the website hackingwithswift.com, where you can buy this video and all the videos in glorious high resolution. Alternatively, you can buy this as an ebook with lots more detailed tutorial, hands on information. It, from just $3, really, it's super cheap. Your support does help more videos like this to be made. Alternatively, find me on Twitter. I am at Two Straws. If you have problems, questions, feedback, suggestions, and so on, get in touch. I'll do my best to help with the time I have. Okay, go ahead and launch Xcode. You are going to love this project. So much to learn, really. Crop nodes, texture stuff, SK actions, uh, GCD, fantastic. Anyway, create a new Xcode project. Choose Game from under iOS application and click Next. I'm going to call mine Project 14 because it is indeed Project 14. For devices, choose iPad. And make sure Sprite Kit's chosen, of course. Oops. Next. And save it somewhere. So before we get into it too much, uh, firstly, change from iPad Air down to iPad 2 to get the speed faster when testing. Then get the project files for this tutorial. Uh, they're on the website. Here they are for me. I will drag these into my Xcode project now. Uh, make sure copy if needed is selected and create groups and press finish. I'll give you the files required to make this project work. We also need to do some pruning as per usual, as you saw in project 11. So delete the code from did move to view. Keep the actual method stub there, but just delete the code inside it. Same for touches began. And we are all set to go. Uh, I would suggest, uh, as always with Sprite Kit stuff, you do choose an orientation. I'll be using landscape, so deselect portrait. Uh, you can change it later, but I suggest for now you use landscape so your numbers match mine. So in game scene.swift, uh, we're gonna go ahead and start writing code. I'm not gonna explain the basics of Sprite Kit to you again. You should remember this from project 11. So SK Sprite nodes, you know, positioning, CG points, CG size, blend modes, add child, uh, all SK label node stuff. You know this already. If not, please go back to project 11 and try again there. It's much easier for all of us. So in did move to view, let's start with a background image. So let background equals now in this time it's called uh oops in content it's called whack background dot ping so i can go ahead and say sk sprite node image named or whack background now when you are loading jpegs you do have to say dot jpg with pings you do not have to say dot ping you can just write the name of it and ios figures it out we'll position this in the center like last time so background dot position equals cg point x 512 oops 512 512 y384 like that we'll use the same blend mode dot replace which makes it draw faster add add child background it's in our scene we also have to add a, a game score label node so uh, make a property up here called var game score sk label node is just like before we need a property to hold the actual score as an integer it needs to be zero by default and we will use a property observer like last time to update the game score text so equals quote score colon then uh, string interpolation score like that just like last time uh, creating it inside did move to view we want to say game score equals sk label node with font named Ooh, what shall we choose? Let's use Chalk Duster. You know you love it. Then we'll give it the full text of score zero. We'll give it position. And this time, actually, we want to position it in the bottom left corner because um, because that's, there's a nice bit of space in the, on the graphic. If you look here, you'll see uh, this grassy area is perfect for scoring. So we'll set the position to be uh, CG point X eight Y eight. Then for the font size, let's choose something nice and big. Font size equals 48 and add child game score. Brilliant. So that creates our basic scene. You can go ahead and run it now, see how it looks. Building, running, loading simulator. Takes a little bit of time, despite having four cores. Boom, there's our game scene. Now I've, I have managed to muff up the score slightly. Uh, by default, uh, SK label nodes are centered on their position. Uh, with a you know center alignment, we don't really want that. Let's make that left aligned a bit nicer, I think. So horizontal alignment mode equals dot left, and let's see if that looks a bit nicer. 
perfect fantastic so that's us up and going now before we uh modified if you remember in a technique project we modified uh, the names to faces collection view project with uh, uh ls coding using a custom class called person uh, we need a custom class here as well because we want to create a slot for uh, all our little penguins to appear in so uh you swift veteran you you know how to do this go to the project press new file choose coco touch class uh, subclass SK node, that's the root class of sprite kit nodes, and call it whack slot. Then press next, then press create. Oh, when my spinning wheel of death goes away, thank you, Yosemite. While that's happening, I'll talk to you a little bit more, keep you entertained. Uh, whack slot we are using for the name because it's not just a whack hole. We could have called it whack hole, but it's more than a hole. The hole will be in there, yes, a whole graphic. You can see it here on the left next to my spinning beach ball, whack hole. But it will also contain uh, the penguin image and more. And Xcode is not recovering. Thank you, Xcode. Oh, no, there we are. It took a little bit of time. Uh, great, correct. Good. Okay, there we go. So there's our uh, wax slot subclass. It is whinging about SK node because it does not import sprite kit by default. So add import sprite kit. Boom. Now, what this uh, slot needs to do is create the hole to begin with, the hole where the penguin will appear from. So we're going to make a new function called, a new method, sorry, called func configure at position. It will take a one parameter called uh, pause, which is a CD point, where to create the slot. And inside this, all we're gonna do for now is assign our um, node to be placed where we asked it to place, asked it to be placed, so here. Then we will create the uh, whole image. So let sprite equals SK sprite node, uh, image named whack hole, and add child sprite. So for now, it does just create a hole and add it to its node, to add it to itself. Now we are not using a Swift initializer here, um, as we did before with the person class, because this inherits from SK node, and SK node has several other initializers that must be also implemented, which makes it awfully painful to do, and Swift is very funny about it. So if we just say uh, no initializing method, it will use SK nodes, and then we'll call configure at position later. It's a very simple shortcut, which makes learning much, much easier. So we're gonna create five uh, slots across the way to begin with. So uh, if you look at our picture here, we're gonna have sort of five slots here, then four beneath it, then five, then four, which creates a nice sort of matrix layout on the screen. And we're gonna do this uh, with three things. Firstly, an array that will hold all the slots all our wax slot objects. So we can reference them later. Secondly, a create slot at method that will handle slot creation. And finally, for loops, well, F-O-U-R, four for loops, uh, one for each row. So the first item is easy enough. We can go to gamescene.swift, then uh, under the score or above the score, let's make it at the top here, make it nice and clean. We're gonna create a new array called slots equals uh, wax slot, wax slot, like that, that creates a new array uh, holding the wax slot type objects and calls it slots. Fantastic, that was easy enough. What a brilliant thing coding is. Now beneath did move to view, please create a new method called func create slot at. This must take a position, which is a CG point. And all it's gonna do is create a slot. So let slot equals wax slot, like that. It will configure it at position using our new method, whatever pause was passed in. It will then add that to our scene and add it to our slots array, like that. Boom. Now we're going to call this thing uh, four times. And that, this is the only moderately hard part of this entire process. Uh, now fortunately, lucky you, I have done all the basic arithmetic for you. So this is actually quite easy. So there's going to be four loops. Uh, and each one will call create slot at multiple times. And it will look like this. So the first one will be four i in uh, zero dot dot less than five like that which means count from zero one two three four but this means less than five so it excludes five at the end so from zero to four we will call create slot at and we'll pass it cg point x 100 plus parentheses 
i times 170, then y 410. Now copy and paste that a few times. I'll explain what it does. So, why, why are you whinging, Swift? What's wrong with you? Create slot at. Oh, see this? I, it's whinging at me because I have muffed something up. What have I muffed up? Uh, I've muffed up a missing brace at the end. See that? It's so easy. Even I miss that kind of thing. You might have said, why are you doing it all in one line? Well, I'm going to do it in one line because otherwise you get this ridiculous spacing of stuff like that. And it's just, it makes it so much harder to see it's doing exactly the same thing. When you have it all in, all in one line, when it, a simple thing like this, it's much easier to read at a glance what you're trying to do. So you can see I'm calling the same thing four times uh, all in one line. Anyway, uh, so create slot at is called with various um, numbers and multipliers here. And uh, it's important. So for the first row, the, 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 the very top row, we say start at x100, then add i times 170, meaning for the first number, 0, it'll lose 0 times 170, i.e. 0, so it'll be x100. For i1, it'll be 1 times 170, i.e. 170, plus 100, so 270. Then it'll be for i2, it'll be 2 times i7, uh, 170, i.e. 340, and add that to 100, so 440. And it adds more like that, each time with the same y position. So uh, we have to make some slight changes to this. We want to say, um, the so the first top row will be uh, 5 items, second row, 4 items, third row, five items, bottom row, four items. And the X spacing needs to vary slightly as well. So it's 180, uh, 100, 180, 100, 180, like that. And then for the uh, Y positions, the top one's 410, fine. The next one is 30 lower, uh, sorry, 90 lower, so 320. And then again, 90 lower, so 230. And again, 90 lower, so 140, like that. And that should be enough to give us a nice layout on the screen. Have a look at this. Boom, fantastic. That's our lovely matrix layout. So you can see it's got five across the top, then four, then five, then four, with the lovely spacing all done by these multipliers here. If you want to, uh, of course, make your own node layout, it's down to you. That's just one that looks good on the screen for me, so we'll go with that for now. So far, this is all old stuff, stuff you've done before in the previous project. So I tried to get through as fast as possible. Now it's time to try something new. We're going to use a new class called SK crop node. This is a special kind of SK node that uses an image as a cropping mask. Anything in the colored part of the image will be visible. Anything outside in the transparent part will be invisible. By default, these nodes don't crop. They just form part of a node tree. But the reason we need them is to crop our penguins correctly. We need to give the impression they're hiding inside these holes. And the easiest way to do that is have a crop node shaped like the hole they can slide out of. So what we're going to do for now is to show you the need for the SK crop node. We'll give it a nil mask, which means that the crop node basically does nothing to begin with, and then we'll add the mask afterwards. So in waxlot.swift, this file here, our slot, let's add a, a property for the penguin picture inside it. So we'll call this uh, var char node is SK sprite node, like that. Now, just before the end of the uh, configure app position method, let's add the, the crop node. So we'll say let crop node equals sk crop node. Crop node dot position equals cg point, ooh, cg point x0 y15. So pushing up just slightly from the uh, bottom of the hole. Then we'll give it a z position. Now, if you remember from the previous project, uh, this affects the position of things inside views, inside nodes in the node tree. So it nudges up a little bit, so it's more visible. And give it just temporarily a nil mask node. This is, this is the default. You don't need this line, but we'll change it later, so it is important. Then we'll create our character nodes. We'll say char node equals sk sprite node with image named penguin good. There are uh, a good penguin here. He's a nice little cute thing, and an evil penguin. He's the same thing, just red. I am not an artist. I'm sure you'll improve your art in your own way. Um, so that loads a good penguin picture. Then we'll say char node dot position equals cg point x zero y minus 90. We're going to push this guy way down beneath the hole. He's, he's out of view. We're also going to name this thing char node dot name equals just character for now. And then we'll add that character. Uh, to the crop node. 
So crop node add child, char node. Now this is what's meant by a node tree. So the scene holds the wax slots, the wax slots hold the char node, uh, the crop nodes, and the crop nodes hold the char node. So there's a, there's a tree forming here. And then we'll add the crop node to the scene like that. Now some parts of that are old, so sprite node and stuff. Some parts are new. Uh, the a crop node is new. Um, the 15 is, isn't just a random number typed in, it is the exact number of points required to make it line up perfectly with the whole graphics. Um, and of course, Z position 1 makes it stand up in front of any other nodes, which is good. So it won't appear behind the whole graphic, for example. Um, and we'll change this later in just a second, make it work correctly. So go ahead and run that now, and you will see, all being well, tons of penguins. So this penguin belongs to this hole, and he's just out of reach of the hole, you see, he's hiding down here, and he'll slide up into there. Now, we can see them all because we have no mask node for our crop node, so they're all visible. What we're going to do is apply the cropping so the penguins are hidden. And to do that, we just load a sprite node into the mask node property. So we'll say SK sprite node, image named, whack mask. It looks like that. This is the, the bottom of the hole here and space for the penguin to appear above it. If you run this now, the thing will look completely different. Boom. All the penguins are gone. Everything's gone. Now, they are not gone. That penguin is still here, for example, but the SK crop node is now cropping it as intended. They can't be seen. And that's where the next thing comes in. How do we get penguins to show themselves? Now, we want the slots to manage showing and hiding penguins themselves, which means we're going to add some properties and methods to them now. The first thing uh, a node needs to know, a wax lot needs to know, is am I currently visible to the player so I can be whacked or not? And the second thing is have I already been hit in this go? Because, of course, if you hit them, they go down and come again later, and that's the point of the game. So we're going to add two properties. The first one is called var visible equals false. Oops, equals false. I am not visible to the player. And finally, a second one, var is hit equals false. I have not been hit by the player. Now, showing a penguin to be tapped on will be handled by a new method called show. This will make the character visible, so it slides upwards. It'll set visible to be true, and it'll make sure is hit is false. And then we'll uh, let the player start hitting it, of course. This method will also decide whether the penguin is good or evil, uh, i.e. whether the player should hit it or not, so the best part of the game. Uh, and this will use the random int method we, uh, function I've introduced in uh, helper.swift um, in the last project. It's rather easy to use. And it will also use the uh, move by x sk action method, which lets things move around uh, on the screen. So. To make it clear, we have this penguin good and penguin evil picture. Uh, and we're going to change, of course, the, the picture as needed so they can see which one's the right one to do. But we're not going to change it by creating a new sprite each time. Instead, we'll change the texture, the picture, of the existing sprite. And that's done using a new class called SK Texture, uh, which is, if you think of SK Texture uh, as being like UI image, where SK sprite node is UI image view, then you are most of the way there. Changing the texture like this means that the node stays exactly where it was. You don't have to keep on adding and removing nodes and naming them and so forth. We just change the picture and we'll change its name too so it knows whether it's good or bad. That's it. It's very straightforward to do. So let's look at the method. Now I'm going to be sneaky here and add into the method a parameter hash high time. What do you call that in the US? Pound sign? Octothorpe? I call it hash. I'm calling it hash. Get over it. Uh, which is a double. And uh, this, the first thing this needs to do is say, if I am already visible, I should not be shown. Because I'm already, I'm already being shown. So we'll say, if visible, uh, brace, return, like that. Get out. I'm visible already. Uh, then we're going to say to our character node, so char node dot run action. We're going to run an action, and the action, like I said, is called skaction.moveByx, or move by x. There it is. It wants delta x, i.e. difference x, difference y, and duration. So uh, x actually is 0. Uh, y is the one we care about. We're going to choose 80. So we start the life at minus 90, move up by 80. 
So it'll now be at minus 10. So it'll be, it'll be very visible at this point. Um, and then duration, I'm going to go something real fast, like 0 0.05 or something. So he slides up really fast. Then we'll say you are now visible and you are now not hit, regardless of what you were before. Then we're going to name and uh, assign a texture to the penguin based on whether it's a good penguin or a evil penguin. And that's done with if random int, random int, uh, we'll use zero and two. So if, if it's zero, one or two, as it was randomizing here, if it's zero, he's a good penguin. So we'll say uh, equals equals zero, open brace. Uh, char node dot texture oh, texture equals so it's called sk texture and it works just like sk sprite node image named I'll say penguin good this is a good penguin and we'll name him char node uh, dot name equals char friend so it was character now it's char friend uh, if it is not zero if it's zero if it if it's one or two Let's give him the evil texture. Texture, SK texture, image named penguin evil. Char node dot name equals char enemy. This is a bad penguin that must be hit. Now, let's talk briefly about this uh, parameter. Hash pound high time. Octothorpe, Octothorpe's a great word. Octothorpe high, high time. This is for later to avoid having to come back and rewrite the method again and uh, it's, it's taking a parameter, which is a double, i.e. A, a, a decimal number with lots of precision, uh, called high time, but it, I put this hash symbol in front of it. Now, what that does is quite important because if I want to say call this show method, I would write show like that. Um, and it'll say I want to hide in three seconds or whatever. If I had written high time, notice how the error appears straight away. Put it in again with a hash. And error goes away, take it out, there's the error. So if we'd just written show with hide time, then we'd say show three. That's what it wants, it wants show three. I'm using this to mean how long should I wait before hiding the penguin. So show three does not really explain that very well. You could go the apple route and say show with hide time if you like, it's down to you. Uh, I much prefer using um, forcing the parameter name, which is that. That means they must specify high time as a label for this parameter. So they now must say show high time three. So it's a bit clearer. It makes the code clearer as you go. That's what it does. So let's uh, take that nonsense out and trigger this show method. Now this is going to be done in game scene.swift and we're going to add a uh, property here called pop-up time. This is how long to wait between showing penguins. So, easy bit, add this property somewhere to game scene.swift. So var pop-up time equals 0 0.85. So a bit less than a second. Uh, to jump start this whole thing, we're gonna create a method called create enemy. And this will uh, show uh, a penguin in a slot. Then we will have uh, create enemy call create enemy itself so somewhere in did of view you know at the end probably let's face it we're going to call uh create enemy and then we're going to uh, call create enemy inside create enemy which means the game runs itself bluntly so it, over time it figures it out now what this needs to do is call itself after pop-up time seconds have passed i.e 0 0.85 seconds so one second has passed and this is done using GCD, Grand Central Dispatch, as we saw when we modified the uh, JSON project to handle White House petitions. We did not use this particular code in there because in there it's mostly about dispatch async and get the getting queues. This time we'll be using uh, dispatch after, which does a time delay before executing a closure. Now the code for this lives inside helper.swift. I've done it for you already. It's here. I am not going to explain how it works. I suggest you buy the book to find out how it works. It's not that hard, fortunately. Uh, of course, the book contains much more information in there. We're just gonna go ahead and use it. Using that method is much easier than trying to write it yourself. Anyway, we're gonna make a method called create enemy, like this, func create enemy. And this thing is going to create a uh, bad guy. It'll decrease pop-up time each time it's called, so the game gets harder each time. 
It'll call shuffle on the array of slots, create the bad guys, and then um, call it off again after a random delay. There's a new operator to be used here. We, we've used plus equals before, which means assign and uh, add, add and assign. We'll use this time uh, star equals, meaning multiply and assign. Um, we'll also be using a new function from helper.swift called random double, which is basically like random int just for doubles because uh, run after the delay, the GCD stuff does require a double in our case. So first things first, create enemy must, must decrease the pop-up time by a small amount. So we'll say pop-up time star equals 0 0.991. So decrease it again, 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 again. Obviously the amount has decreased, decreases itself over time, um, but it does make the game get harder for time. Lower this number to make it harder, you know, 0 0.991. 98 that's substantially faster trust me you want to use very small differences here anyway we'll say slots dot shuffle that's using the code from array plus shuffling to shuffle, shuffle array of slots then we're going to say let's show slot zero show and for hide time we'll pass in pop-up time which means they will hide after pop-up time seconds plus some multiplier which we put in there but as this decreases they will hide faster and faster as the game goes on then we want to say if random int between 0 and 12 is greater than 4 slots 1 dot show with hide time pop-up time again now copy paste that a few times so what this code here is going to do is say uh, randomize the number of penguins being shown at any given time yes always show at least one we might show more, could be two, three, four, or five. So we're gonna add two, three, and four in there, so it's possibly up to five penguins. And then, obviously, it shouldn't always create five. We want it to be uh, quite likely it'll create two, not so likely it'll create three, unlikely it'll create four, and very unlikely it'll create five, but it might do. So it means the player's always guessing what's gonna happen next. Then we want to create a random delay for when we'll call create enemy again. Uh, because otherwise it's very predictable. So we'll say the minimum delay, min delay, is pop-up time divided by two, so half the current pop-up time. And the max delay should be pop-up time times two, so double the current one. And then we'll use the run after delay function that I included in helper.swift helper for you. It takes a time interval, so we'll make a random double. Min is min delay, max is max delay, then get rid of that and we use trailing closure syntax so we'll say uh oops unowned self in don't forget unowned self in otherwise it will complain then self dot create enemy so create enemy calls create enemy round and round and round after a random delay so with that all we have to do is go inside did move to view and ask uh, create enemy to call itself the first time to start the loop in motion. So we'll say in here run after the delay delay is one and the uh, closure is unowned self in and Then for the code we want just self dot create enemy so that calls create enemy the first time which then calls itself later on now because uh, we're, we're done most of the uh, work here for now Let's go back to waxslot.swift and add a hide method. You see, if if, the, if you run the code, you'll see the penguins, they, they show themselves, but they never actually go away. Um, so the game isn't much fun. There we go, two penguins, two more, one bad, another one, two more, two more. See the randomization of times quite pleasing? I think so. But they never go away, so it's quite easy. Let's fix that by making a hide method. Now we could of course use a fixed high time, but by using pop-up time for our high time, it means that they will hide themselves faster over time, which is awesome. So we're gonna put some code in here saying func hide. And this is the opposite of the check here. If we are already hidden, we get out. So we say if not visible, return, like that. So to hide ourselves, all we have to do is do the opposite of what we did before, which is the opposite of this thing here. So we'll say char node, dot run action sk action sk action dot move by x zero y minus 80 opposite of there and duration 0.05 again so very very fast movement 
and then visible equals false. We don't have to clear is hit because that's cleared again when show is used. So that undoes the result of show. The penguin will now move back down the screen into its hole and clear visible. Um, but we want to trigger this automatically after a period of time. And through extensive testing, i.e. I've sat around playing it a long time, uh, I reckon the optimal high time is between three and four times the show time. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to, at the end of uh, show, we'll add another run after delay call. And it'll be high time, which is, of course, the show time, pop-up time from before, times between three and four, I'll go for three and a half, and use training close syntax to say self.hide. You will need to uh, self.hide, use unknown self in, like that, boom. And now the penguins will hide themselves. So you'll see the game really, really come together now. Let's see what it looks like. So one penguin shows, another one shows, he hides, two more show, he hides. Um, or she hides, you know, apparently it's very hard to tell the gender of a penguin. Now you know. See how much I teach you in this, this tutorial series? So all now showing how to get random times. This game is really good. Look at that, three there, fantastic. Good, we are coming together. Now let's go and whack them, whack the bad ones. And of course you can't, there is no whacking yet. This is not really whack a penguin, it's more watch a penguin. Let's fix that by letting players whack the penguins. So what we're gonna do is, when, when you whack a penguin, we're going to use a new SK action type called wait for duration, which means do nothing as an action temporarily. Then we will run some code uh, using SK action run block. Block is objective C's name for a swift closure. And then we'll use a sequence. So sequences are also SK actions, but they're special SK actions. They run things in order. So we'll say sequence, wait for duration, sequence, execute some code. And this will all be inside a new method of our whack slot called hit, like that. So the first thing we do is say is hit equals true. That is hit even, is hit equals true. Yes, I've been hit. Don't let us score more points by using this. Then we'll create uh, our code to make the, the penguin actually be hit. So we'll say uh, let delay equals sk action dot wait for duration 0.25. So it'll do nothing for a quarter of a second. This helps users see they hit the right penguin. Then we'll say hide equals sk action move by x. Uh, so it's x0, y minus 80, duration 0.5. So he moves down slowly when he's been hit. Then we're going to make him not hit, not visible. So we'll say let not visible equals sk action dot run block. And this just takes a block. So we can use open brace straight away like that. Uh, unowned self in. And all we're going to do is say self dot visible equals false. This thing is no longer visible. And finally, we're going to sequence them all together. So we'll say let sequence equals sk action dot sequence. It takes an array of actions. So we'll say first do the delay, then do the hide, then do the not visible. And it will literally run that one, finish, run that one, finish, run that one, finish. It's a brilliant sk action to know. And we'll say charno dot run action sequence like that. So it'll run all three. Now with that method in place, we can call hit in the touches began method in our game scene. So this needs to figure out, of course, what was tapped using the same thing we saw in project 11, the nodes at point method you saw. So it'll find any touch, it'll find out where it was tapped, then get an array of all nodes where that point was in the scene. And then we'll loop through everything in this, in that, that all, the, all those nodes, all the points at the scene, and say, if are you called char friend or char enemy, and take the appropriate action. So very roughly, the code needs to look something like uh, this. So touches began. We're going to say, uh, just like last time, let touch equals touches dot any object as UI touch, just like last time. Then we're going to find the location in the scene where it's tapped. So let location equals touch dot location in node self. So we now know where it was. And then we want to find out what was tapped. We'll say let object equals nodes at point location as sk node. This is just like last time. So now we're going to loop through that and see what's been tapped. So we'll say for node in nodes. This is the important stuff. So if the node's name is char friend, then, uh, whoops, <laughs> you tap the wrong thing, you lose points. Else if node.name is char enemy, then yay, you got that one right. End the brace, end the brace. Uh, ah, that should be called object. Sorry, it's my mistake. For 
Actually, yeah, let's that, name that no. That's a much smarter name than objects. Not bits of the silly thing to name that thing. Uh, so that will just loop through all the things that were tapped on, find out whether it's called char friend or char enemy, and take the appropriate action. Of course, all the work happens here or here, but it's not really too difficult to do. But it, there is one slight proviso. If you remember, the penguin image, the char friend or the char enemy thing, was not added as a node to the scene. It was added as a node to the crop node, which was added as a node to the wax slot, which was added as a node to the scene. Now, we need to navigate upwards because if you look at our, our hide method, it doesn't belong to the penguin, it belongs to the wax slot. So we need to get to, to the wax slot, to this thing, by going through the crop node and up again into, uh, from there from the char node. So we've got to go up a little path using parent. So nodes actually have parents built into them. So you can say what's my parent and what's its parent and so on and so forth. So into the, the whoops section, this is a mistake, we'll write let wax slot equals, this is the parent bit, node.parent, you'll see it's optional, force unwrap, we know it's got a parent, uh, dot parent as wax slot. So this is our penguin, that's its crop node, that's the wax slot. So we can ca cast that safely to be wax slot. Then we'll say, if you are actually not visible, you know, somehow you managed to uh, tap this thing, fine, happens, uh, continue. Continue means go to the next element in the loop. So go to the next node in our nodes array. Just get out of it, basically. Uh, if it's already been hit, then uh, don't do anything. So if wax slot dot is hit, then also continue. Don't let the player hammer it while the thing is doing its wait for duration call. Then if we're still here, we can safely call wax slot dot hit. And we're going to uh, take off using minus equals subtract and assign five. We're also going to, for the first time, play a sound inside the game. This is done really easily. There are two sounds here, whack and whack bad. Um, and will I, my Mac on volume? There we go. So, so you can hear from my microphone. You'll hear almost nothing, I'm sure, but I'll give it a try. You'll hear it in your version anyway. Um, we're going to sort of call run action, i.e. run action on our scene, sk action dot play sound file named. I've called mine uh, whack bad dot calf. It's a core audio file format, uh, which is basically an AIFF, but you can use other formats too. You can use WAV and MP3 if you choose to. Uh, wave completion false. Don't wait for it. Just play it straight away. That's if you hit a bad penguin. So... Um, as in, as in the wrong penguin, a friendly penguin. Find its find its crop node, find its wax slot, make it a wax slot. If it's not visible, bail out. If it is hit, bail out. Otherwise, make it hit. Kill the score by five points and play a bad sound. Uh, when they hit a good penguin, uh, which will, of course, um, I don't know this. Let me rephrase this. Uh, an evil penguin, there we go. When they hit the right penguin, I'm going to copy and paste the same code in there to begin with. Uh, so fine, get the, get the wax slot. Then we want to say, uh, if it's not visible, continue. If it's already hit, continue, fine. We're also going to modify the scale of the penguin picture a little bit so it looks like it's been hit. So it's obviously a good thing to hit this penguin. So we'll say wax slot dot char node dot x scale equals 0.85 and copy and paste the same for y scale. That means shrink it slightly on the screen, uh, call its hit method, and we're going to use plus plus score to add one to the score. And instead, we'll just use plain whack.calf rather than whack bad. Now, we are modifying the X and Y scale here when they hit the evil penguins, when they hit the correct penguins. Um, so we need to go ahead and modify that back to be one, the default 100%, uh, when we call show inside whackslot.swift. So choose that now. And then in show, somewhere, just say you are back at one and you are back at one. Uh, like that. So char node dot x scale equals one, char node y scale equals one. Just to reset it if it gets changed. So the game is now almost done. Thanks to the uh, property observer that, that did set, we put in early on, the game is now actually playable, at least until uh, pop up time gets so low that it's extraordinarily hard. Well, you can fix that later perhaps. Um, go ahead and try it now, see what you think. It should all hang together quite nicely. Penguin, he's a good one, I'll leave him alone. Bad, hit him. Hey. Can you hear that? I hope so. I am hitting the good penguins. They shrink slightly so they've been smacked. Uh, the good ones? Oh no, a sad sound. 
probably can't hear it, and my score goes down. So you see you only earn one point when you hit the evil penguins, but you lose five points when you hit the friendly penguins. So it gets much, much harder to uh, win if you're a bad aim. And you see they're starting to show and hide faster now, so it makes the game harder as you play. Come on, you evil penguins. There we go. I am I'm a master of this game. Anyway, we're now going to modify the game um, because effectively pop-up time shrinks and shrinks and shrinks. Let's, you know, 0.1. It's crazy, crazy hard. You, you cannot win that game. Well, I would say uh, test on device because tapping is easier than clicking. I'll tell you that much. So to fix this problem and bring our project to an effective close, we're going to limit the game to creating just 30 rounds of enemies. So each, each round is one call to create enemy, which might create, of course, up to five at a time. Uh, we don't care how many it created. We just care that create enemy has been called 30 times. So uh, in gamescene.swift, let's create a new property somewhere under pop-up time, pop time perhaps. Uh, var num rounds equals zero. And then inside uh, create enemy, uh, I am going to add one to num rounds each time we call this thing and say if we have called this if num round is greater or equal to 30 then uh, we're going to end the game so we'll say uh, for slot in slots slot dot hide so make all the penguins go away and then add also just beneath that uh, let game over equals sk sprite node image named game over and we'll position it smack in the middle of the screen game over dot position equals cg point with uh, x 512 y 384 and add that to our scene game over and we'll also call return to exit the method entirely now this will stop game uh, this will stop create enemy being called again because it's only recalled thanks to this run after delay um, function call down here that will not be hit because we're returning from the method at this point so when we hit game over the game ends and you will not play uh, any more enemies uh, that's it so that that finishes the game you can go ahead and play I'll decrease the volume in the unlikely event you can hear what I'm doing when I'm tapping on stuff but I can now shoot all these enemies and uh, win the game again do play on the simulator because you'll find very quickly that moving your mouse and, and clicking is much slower than tapping on the screen so if you're thinking, wow, this game is really hard, no, it's just uh, easier on devices, which is what it's, of course, aimed for ultimately. And that's it. Um, hopefully, after 30 rounds, I'm not sure how many that will actually be, it will call game over. There we go. And that ends the game. No more create enemy being called. The game is over. There's the score, perhaps your high score screen or something. That bit's down to you. So that ends the project. Um, it's another game under your belt, another nice game under your belt. You've learned lots of uh, great new skills, SK crop node, SK texture, uh, dispatch after being used with run after delay to delay call stuff. You've used star equals and minus equals operator. Uh, you saw about forcing method uh, parameter names in here, this kind of this octothorpe hash pound sign thing uh, to force a method name to be used, uh, method label, sorry. Um, and tons of new SK actions, you know, playing sounds and waiting and stuff and sequencing. Um, so it's all time well spent. For more information, go to the website hackingwithswift.com where you can buy this whole thing as a book, which contains so much more information. It costs just $3 and your donation really does help me make more videos like this. Alternatively, you could buy the whole series and learn so much more about Swift. Uh, you can also buy videos. Alternatively, you can find me on Twitter. I am at two straws. If you have questions, problems, feedback, support, uh, better graphics for my games perhaps, please get in touch and I'll do my best to help you.